Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Jane Wynette. And today I'm joined by three local nonprofits, the DuPage Children's Museum, Bridge Communities, and the Naperville Park District. You're watching Spotlight, and joining me now from the DuPage Children's Museum is Andrea Weil. She's the president and CEO. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you for having me. Always good to talk to you, and we've chatted a couple of times during this most unusual year, uh, starting off with uh, March 13th when you had to close your doors because of the pandemic uh, up until now. So do me a favor and just kind of recap what has the last year been like and what is the DuPage Children's Museum being able to do? Wow, what an amazing roller coaster it has been. We have learned a ton. And you're right, we closed our doors, but we did not close. We dove right into having a deep impact on our communities. Our goal has is always and always will be meeting our audiences where they are. That was our direction before the pandemic, during it, and will be after. So our objective was to dive in and understand the barriers that presented themselves to families in accessing exceptional early learning and STEM experiences for their children. And we worked to overcome them. And we did that through partnership with community members, stakeholders. We delivered programming in homeless shelters and hospital situations in dis school districts across the region from 203 and 204 to 129 and 33 in West Chicago. So um, lots and lots of really great stuff and, that we learned uh, and that we will always apply uh, as we get back to whatever is next. Okay, well, and let's talk about that a little bit because I think one of the things you talked about there and oftentimes I think we think about the museum, we come and our children play, but as you're so very focused on, it's really really about that early learning and, and particularly in the area of STEM. So what have you learned as you've gone through this last year uh, with the programming that you've had to pivot uh, as you come out on the other side and we hopefully return to some kind of new normal? So what have you learned? Will, it, will you bring some of that forward with you? Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the great things about the DuPage Children's Museum and cultural institutions in general is how nimble we can be. We can work within a community setting and identify where there may be some gaps um, in service and bridges that we can help fill between uh, educational systems and the children and parents they serve. So our focus has very much been on looking at how, um, number one, really building really high quality, fun, hands-on play and programming, and then looking how we can efficiently scale that to reach as number of kids as we can wherever they are. Because the reality is that driving to the museum isn't always an option for people. Um, admission is sometimes a challenge. But the good stuff that we deliver, our heart and soul, can be delivered anywhere. And then we can figure out a way to bring them back to that physical space um, when that becomes appropriate. But for us, it is about that quality programming and then the capacity to scale it to where kids are. And I tell you, it was not easy. You would think it would be easy figuring out how to get programming to kids in a homeless shelter. It's not. And the only way you do it is by working really closely with the fabulous people uh, like April and DuPage Pads and, uh, and folks at Bridges, Karen Wells. I mean, they have been great partners in helping us learn how we can do that. And we've learned a lot and hopefully this will end up becoming part of just what we do as a matter of course. The reality is that if we can provide really compelling, great exper learning experiences where kids are as well, that's really, that, that's meeting our objective. You've been working hard to give everybody access even while the doors are being closed, but the doors are starting to open a little bit. And so hey. when, when, yeah, right? <laughs> when do you expect, Andrea, that, uh, that things will get back on the, uh, the actual facility to things that are more normal? Yep, 
Yep. Well, I tell you, um, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we, at the beginning of February, opened up to what we call private playtime, which were groups of up to 10 and now 20 that can come in at a time so they can have their own safe bubble. Um, that's been super successful. But under new rules announced just in the last couple of weeks, we can move towards opening to 25 percent capacity. We hope to be able to do that before Memorial Day weekend. So that is our target. Uh, and then as Illinois uh, continues to pace through these phases, um, the next phase between four and five is bridge to five, which would allow us to open up even more. So I really expect that by the official beginning of the summer, we will be able to open to our members and general audiences at a 25% capacity and then keep growing that through the summer. But we look forward to welcoming our guests back very soon. Absolutely. Well, we look forward to walking through those doors. Um, as we're wrapping up here, Andrea, what's exciting and coming on the horizon for you? Oh, some totally cool things. Uh, uh, first of all, um, right now, we're doing some remarkably cool programming with District 203. Every Monday, um, we are delivering STEM labs into, their, into the classrooms of all the students in their K-5 um, elementary schools. This summer, uh, and right now, we have open enrollment for our tinkering camp. Uh, so that tinkering camp will be a ton of fun. It'll be a combination of indoors and outdoors. Most of it will be outdoors. It'll be great for kids that are five, four to six years old, and then we'll have separate opportunities for seven to 10. And then a really cool new part this year is that we're gonna have really kind of junior facilitators, junior collaborators um, who are in that teenage range, 15 to 17, who will come. Um, and actually, I think it's a little bit one younger than that, 11 to 15, who will be like near peer mentors for the kids in playing. When we do our big opening, whether it is in the middle of the summer or in the fall, we will be premiering the questionnaires exhibit Think, Play, and Learn, which is an exhibit based on the book questionnaire series of books. Ada Twist Scientist is one of the stars. In fact, she's getting her very own Netflix series in the fall, uh, produced by the Obama's production company. But there come, she's coming to the DuPage Children's Museum first in the premiere of the questionnaires exhibit uh, based on the books by Naperville author Andrea Beatty. So we're really excited by that. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations to you. I know you and your staff have worked extremely hard to pivot through this whole process. As you said, meet the kids where they are, still deliver on your mission. So we look forward to walking in your doors, whether that's early in the summer or a little bit later. And thank you for all yeah. the good work that you're doing, Andrea. Well, thank you for continuing to be such a remarkable service to this community and highlighting these great stories. Thank oh, you. You're so welcome. If you are interested in learning more about the DuPage Children's Museum and the many programs that they offer, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. For more than 150 years, you've believed in Busey. Today, more than ever, we believe in you. To our healthcare workers, first responders, and local businesses, you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. NCTV 17's news team brings you coverage that is specific to Naperville, accurate, and up to date on the latest developments in our community. These stories keep us informed and inspired. These stories bring us together. If you value your local nonprofit television station, please make a donation so NCTV 17 can continue its mission of telling local stories on air and online. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Spotlight. I'm your host, Jane Wynette, and joining me now is Amy Van Polen. She's the Senior Director at Bridge Communities. Welcome, Amy. Welcome, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about where we've been over the last year. What have been some of the challenges that your clients have been experiencing at Bridge Communities? 
Gosh, um, where do we begin? You know, we've all had such a challenging year. Uh, but I think the thing that stands out the most to us at Bridge is that the pandemic has really shown that our clients are very susceptible in their employment. We averaged about a 5% unemployment rate of our clients leading up to the pandemic. And within six weeks of the onset of the pandemic, we went to a 43% unemployment rate. Wow. I know. Wow. There is no doubt about it. Wow. And so our employment team jumped into gear uh, trying to do unemployment um, benefits, the CARE Act benefits, uh, working with our families to try to transition to working at home, while at the same time balancing uh, children now going to school at home and um, the technology needs that our families had. And then we really jumped into gear with the safety and security of our families with PPE and cleaning of our apartments, making sure everyone was staying safe. But I will tell you, the unemployment rate was the big wowie for us. Mm. Uh, thankfully, through all of the incredible hard work and the fact that the economy is starting to move slowly back towards recovery, we've been able to move that um, unemployment rate back down to 9%. So lots of hard work there and lots of resiliency of our families. Yeah, well done. And I think, you know, as your name implies, you're that bridge, right? You're the bridge uh, from homelessness into full uh, home ownership and I think that uh, we just haven't realized how vulnerable and how easy it is to suddenly be in a very challenging situation and it, it, it does come down to employment, right? It really does. When we look at the root causes of homelessness for families, it is built in economics and abuse often. We have so many of our families that are headed by single women that are uh, survivors of domestic violence. And this is their next stage to moving on to self-sufficiency and rebuilding their lives. And we have to work on the economics of the household. We have to work on the employment and the education of the woman and or male and woman in the household. That is the key to getting to the, what you said, that self-sufficiency and that home ownership or permanent housing. Okay. What's next, uh, Amy, for Bridge Communities? What, what, what do you see uh, happening on the hopefully soon horizons, right? Oh, gosh. Oh, from your mouth to God's ears, right? Um, so we are just going into our next three years strategic planning. Uh, we had a new CEO join our team uh, just about a year ago now, and so that's been fantastic. Uh, lots of new ideas about how we are going to continue to leverage um, our um, portfolio of apartments, not only for transitional housing, but also providing affordable housing for our client graduates and for persons in the community as we all know, is greatly needed in DuPage County, is really creating and um, and supporting affordable housing. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of work around that. Uh, continuing to bring in clients, um, we welcomed 37 new families into our program in 2020, and uh, we'll continue to do that throughout 2021, uh, continue to bring in families, um, and expanding our volunteer and expanding our mentor reach. Um, we have new volunteers volunteers that are coming in through some of the service clubs. We have some new partnerships that we're doing with some groups in Naperville. So all, you know, I just look at it as um, we're just continuing to move forward in a way that is serving the community and, and what our families need. That's wonderful. Well, listen, um, as we're wrapping up, I know you have something exciting that's coming up at the end of this summer, right? So just give the viewers a little sneak peek of uh, what that event might be. Yeah, we're really excited about this. Um, so we are launching a golf outing that is going to be at Naperville Country Club. It's going to be on Monday, August 30th. Uh, the information about the golf outing is on our website. And so we really encourage people to visit our website and look. It's going to be um, sort of a everything old is new again i uh, will have some vintage cars and some really fun like vintage items on just really celebrating what is old and how we can do it a little differently i just think it kind of fits in you know how we're just all evolving and continuing to change um but we really look forward to welcoming um all of our friends and our business relationships and all of our partners in naperville out to the club on uh, august 30th so that'll be a really fun afternoon of golf 
Absolutely. Well, we wish you lots of blue skies with that and a great opportunity to reconnect in person. I think obviously you've pivoted beautifully into that virtual space, but always nice when we can get back to more of that face-to-face -face interaction, right? We are looking forward to it, absolutely. We feel like we're stepping forward to that little bit by little bit, and this golf outing, I think, is gonna be a wonderful opportunity for us all to come back together and celebrate our families and give back to our community. That's wonderful. Amy, thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Always. And if you would like to find out more about Bridge Communities, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break for a few short messages. We're coming right back. For more than 150 years, you've believed in Busey. Today, more than ever, we believe in you. To our healthcare workers, first responders, and local businesses, you're central to the communities we're proud to call home. Busey's grateful to partner with you and your families through life's ups and downs, today and for generations to come. Because as neighbors helping neighbors, we're in this together. Busey, grateful to serve the communities we call home. The Naperville Police Department needs your help to solve crime and bring offenders to justice. When you submit tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers, you help keep our city one of the safest in the nation. Tips to Naperville Crime Stoppers have helped solve hundreds of crimes and recover over $7 million in drugs, property, and cash. Remember, tipsters remain anonymous and receive cash rewards up to $1,000 if their tips lead to an arrest. Call the tip line at 630-420-6006. You may have that one piece of information that solves the crime. Welcome back to Spotlight. And joining me now from the Naperville Park District is Director of Recreation and Facilities, Brad Wilson. Welcome, Brad. Hello, thanks for having me. Always good to see you. And I'm gonna hop straight in and ask the question that's on every young swimmer's mind and older swimmers <laughs> too. What's the deal for the beach this summer? Well, we're excited for swimming to return to Centennial Beach this summer. Uh, we're currently making preparations to open the facility on its normal weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Right now though, we're still working through some of the details. Uh, we're waiting for our license from the Illinois Department of Public Health. Uh, as well as uh, we're monitoring the state guidelines to see if there's going to be updates to aquatics operations. Uh, right now, the, the current guidelines uh, are, are dated June of 2020. There have not been updates. So before we really put anything out there, we want to make sure that we have the most current guidelines. We anticipate that uh, when you come to the beach this year, that reservations most likely will be needed. So that's something that we will plan to communicate out to residents as we get closer to the season, because I know that everyone is very interested in how they can come back and swim at Centennial Beach. Yeah, it's such a, it's a beautiful jewel of our community. And I know it's difficult. And I it know is. certainly for you, it's challenging. I mean, these guidelines are changing and, and it's an ever evolving process. So we just have to have a little patience and know that eventually we'll be there, right? And we want to make sure that when we put out information, it's the most up-to-date and current and that we uh, don't have to change it too quickly. Yeah, no, we appreciate that, Brad. Now talk a little bit about some of the events that you're putting on this summer. What, are, what can we look forward to? Sure. Well, a lot of the, the popular events that we hold each summer will be returning. Our, our concerts in the park, uh, a night at the movies, children's lunch hour entertainment, to name a few. Uh, those are always very popular events that we hold throughout the community. We're also excited with the addition of 95th Street Community Plaza, which I'll talk about in a little bit. We have a performance pavilion there. So a number of offerings will be provided at that location with our children's lunch hour entertainment, an acoustics concert, uh, and a number of other offerings. So something for, for our residents to watch for. We're also excited to bring back the farmer's market that will open in June and run through September on Thursday evenings again at the 95th Street Library parking lot. Uh, we have Kite Fly, which we were unfortunately not able to hold last year, uh, but we are hoping to, uh, to hold on Sunday, June 6th at Frontier Sports Complex, where families can come out and see professional kiters as well as fly their own kites. So just a whole slew of, of offerings that we will have this year, and all of those will be uh, in our summer program guide and on our website. 
That's wonderful. I know one of the things that as a longtime Naperville resident I so appreciate is that you are always reinventing. You are always coming up with new <laughs> new events and new things that we can get involved in recreationally. So uh, that's incredible. Uh, let's talk about summer camps because I, I think with the year that all the kiddos have had, uh, you know, everybody has got summer camp on the mind. Talk about yours, Brad. What are you offering up this year? Absolutely. We have uh, actually right now we're taking registration for over 100 different types of uh, summer camps from our day camps to sports camps to camps for the arts, uh, just a very wide variety of, of camps that we will have available. Um, so that's something that we encourage residents register early for those uh, so that we know that, that ch your child is registered and is going to, to come and join us this summer uh, and have a lot of fun in, in the different camps that we provide. With day camps, they're going to be structured a little bit differently. Uh, we will continue to operate under the state guidelines, which means that uh, most likely we will have smaller group sizes within those camps. And then instead of taking some of those bigger field trips where we've traveled to different destinations with our day camps, we're going to look to bring entertainment into the camps mm. uh, so that the kids can stay in the park but still have uh, just unique entertainment uh, throughout the course of the week. And with Centennial Beach reopening, uh, we would also like to, to get some of those camps back so that the kids can go swimming at some point during the days. Yeah. So just a wide variety of camps and, and certainly encourage residents to, to take a look at what we've got available. Okay. Well, now you mentioned something interesting there that I want to kind of build on. You talked about bringing some of that entertainment into your camp. So you've launched this new campaign, the Staycation Campaign. Talk a little bit on, and explain what that's all about and why you thought that was a good idea. Yeah, well, the name of the campaign is Park It In Naperville. Uh, and really, it, it has double meaning. It's the stay in place or stay at home, uh, but encourages people to really enjoy all that we have to offer. Uh, really, it's in, in the intention is to encourage residents uh, to enjoy all of the vast recreational opportunities that we have. So whether that be our parks, our facilities, our programs, um, the campaign kicked off earlier this spring and it really is drawing attention to the opportunities that we have available during the course of the spring. It will continue throughout the summer and throughout the fall as well. Um, and again, really the purpose is to highlight all of those great opportunities that residents have right here in Naperville uh, to, to get out of their home, to come out into the parks, out into the programs, and enjoy what we have to, to offer. So we look forward to really highlighting that and highlighting all that uh, that we provide to the community and that's available to the community here in Naperville. Well, I love that and I love the tagline, park it in Naperville, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> One of the things, and just kind of picking up, because I know everybody loves Centennial Beach. Where, you know, I mean, we live in the state of Illinois, so anytime we can get to outdoor water, you know, we want to be able to do that, right? Because it's a small amount of time. But you launched and opened two splash pads last year. Uh, talk a little bit about those and how residents can use those uh, parks. Well, we were very excited to, to open last year two new park developments. Uh, the first is 95th Street Community Plaza located at Frontier Sports Complex next to the 95th Street Library. Uh, it has a huge uh, storybook themed playground that is there, a splash pad that we were able to open last June, as well as the, the Wagner Family Pavilion, a performance pavilion that I mentioned before. Um, this year, we're also opening Wolf's Crossing Community Park. Uh, it's an over 30 acre park uh, located on Wolf's Crossing Road, just west of 248th Avenue in South Naperville. It also has a splash pad that we are planning to open uh, on May 20th. Uh, there is a, a formal ribbon cutting that is going to take place on that day at five o'clock where we will officially open Wolf's Crossing Park. And really it's much more than a splash pad. It has a playground, multiple hard courts for basketball, uh, tennis, volleyball, pickleball. Uh, we have a, a ball field, picnic pavilion, multi-purpose field, sled hill. Uh, and then a couple of unique features is uh, fitness stations, but also a challenge course. Uh, it's a ninja warrior type of obstacle course that are available, that's available for all ages to be able to test out their, their ninja warrior type of abilities. Oh, that's great. Well, that you could certainly yeah. just park it at Wolf's Crossing, it sounds like this summer. You've got plenty enough to do down there. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's a great park and a number of great amenities and really is uh, the result of a lot of community input that we received from residents on the types of amenities they were looking for in the park. So very excited to, to open that park for, for the community. That's terrific. Well, as we wrap, Brad, uh, you know, something that I know uh, many people are interested in, which is golfing, which we did see some really nice things happening last year. I can personally attest to uh, enjoying your courses quite a lot last summer. Talk a little bit about your golf program as we wrap. 
Yeah, well, uh, we anticipate that uh, we're going to have a very busy year again this year. Uh, last year, we had uh, the, the most number of rounds, I believe, since 2009. Uh, and we have a number of programs and tournaments that are returning this year uh, now that guidelines allow for, for those to do so. Um, so certainly something for a community to check out. If they're either a beginner or an advanced golfer, we have a number of different opportunities that's uh, available there. We have uh, a couple of capital projects that are going to take place at the golf courses uh, in August. Naperbrook is going to have a renovated uh, practice range as well as practice green. So that will close for about four to six weeks. And then in September, we're gonna start some improvements at Springbrook Golf Course as well, working on drainage improvements there. Part of a two phase uh, renovation project where in 2022, we'll come back and do some, uh, some other improvements to the course. So golf is certainly a very popular activity right now. Great opportunity to get outside. And uh, certainly with the two courses that we have here in Naperville, uh, great opportunities for, for residents to come out and enjoy the game. Yeah, absolutely. And your staff is wonderful out there. I have to say they're always very friendly, always very welcoming. And when I flubbed the first drive on the first hole, they're, they're very kind. They don't laugh. So we, we uh, I certainly can speak to appreciating that very much. So um, it, very you've good. got some incredible stuff happening. Uh, we so appreciate the good work that you're doing, Brad, and trying to constantly pivot to meet the residents' needs, whether that's through th facilities or events or programming. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. We appreciate it, and thank you for having me tonight. Absolutely. And if you would like more information about the programming available through the Naperville Park District this summer, please go and visit their website. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We're coming right back with more Spotlight. I'd like to thank all of my guests for joining us on Spotlight and our friends at Busey Bank for their generous sponsorship of today's show. To learn more about the organizations featured on this episode, please visit our website at nctv17.com. And to stay informed about what's happening in our community, sign up to receive our daily news update and like and follow us on Facebook. For Spotlight, I'm Jay Mournett. Thank you for watching. Today's Spotlight is brought to you in part by presenting sponsor, Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise.